Network, are you excited for some fashion? <laughs> Me too. If you are sitting in the audience right now and you are wearing an outfit you made yourself, let me hear you cheer. If you're sitting in the audience right now and you're wearing an outfit that includes a piece from one of our vendors in the vendor hall, let me hear a cheer. If you are sitting in the audience right now and neither of those things is true, if you plan to remedy that by the end of the weekend, let me hear a cheer. Hey, Strange Lady. Hey. I would love, if you made your own outfit and you're out in the crowd, I want to see it. Stand up and come stand here because you are comfortable. Let's see those outfits. Anybody got something they'd like to show them? Come and show yourself off. Don't be shy. Come on down. Give these folks some encouragement. Yeah. This is so Beautiful. That's what this show is all about. Showing yourselves off. Yes. Look at that fashion. Come on down. The creativity, the fashion. Ladies and gentlemen, and those of you outside the gender binary, you are standing, just sitting, in the presence of greatness. Spur of the moment fashion show. This is, this is really what I love, is when a fashion show breaks out at a fashion show. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's like a, a fashion show turducken. <laughs> this fashion show is bigger on the inside. I'd love for you guys to switch up a little bit, to see uh, some more action, some, some rocking. And what many of you in the audience may not know is that each of these outfits took years of training to be able to move properly. So, you know, really acknowledge what the models have gone through to the war and do that.
folks, let's hear it one more time for our Clockwork Alchemy Fire Beast Guys. You can give it a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Yes. By the civilized skies aboard a Zeppelin, Shelly, your Zeppelin stewardess, can address most needs of the steampunk passengers by dispensing those two most vital items, tea and air. The uniform was inspired by the double top stitch detailing in Edwardian existing women's suit. The fluted details echo the fuselage of a steam combined aircraft. The jaunty hat is a military kepi with some Robin Hood flair. The Victorian spacesuit Damien is wearing is a best in show. And what would the well-dressed gentleman wear when exploring space? Here is the answer in this costume. This spacesuit was inspired by the early underwater diving suits. Naturally, if it worked for under the sea, it would work in space. The development of specially treated clear polymer would allow this dashing adventurer to be aware of any beasties prowling about the moonscape. <laughs> Note to bio. Under the proper atmospheric condition, the portholes would allow the individual inside to enjoy a smoke. <laughs> so. German Imperial Zeppelin Commander. This dashing German officer was inspired by equal parts of the fearless leader from Rocky und Bullwinkel and Eric von Stroheim in the classic 1937 movie Le Grand Illusion. The uniform based on historical research is literally topped off with a vintage Pickelhaga spike helmet. which was also painstakingly pleated to make the trim. This one took over 70 hours to make, and it was spaced out over a number of years. The lobster tail, while uh, being created from a period silhouette, is a deadly surprise. The top of the bustle uh, ports the bottom of the bustle provide population as needed to escape the zombies, monsters, and even cars. Just by doing this. <laughs> Another best show, and winner of the 2014 Threads Magazine Halloween costume. Be weary when Minka is around. Dory is wearing the Royal Air Dispatch Courier Night Division. The inspiration for, came from the discovery of an obscure military patch, a cat with wings led to the design of the uniform for the Royal Air Dispatch, or RAM. Further inspiration was drawn from Kiki's delivery service as well as World War I pilot uniforms, 
and the coveralls worn by early female aviators, such as Harriet Quimby and Matilda Mosson. The combination top hat and flying helmet features built-in goggles that can flip down or flip and attach to the hat with magnets, while the bat-like wings allow the rad courier to glide. The attached jetpack provides the propulsion. Goji is the celestial queen of the comet, would be at home in a Baron von Hugen adventure. The costume is based on the silhouette of an Elizabethan brown and an exaggerated to create an outfit suitable for a Venice carnival. The sleeves are cut into segments boned with and embellished with beaded appliques. The front of the stomacher is corded to create dimension and accented with red tongues of fabric. The black velvet of the garment is printed with gold bursts of glitter that echo the namesake of this character. Shine bright, dear queen. Come one, come all, and meet the call, the Harlequin ringmaster of a very stylish steampunk carnival. The Harlequin is a witty, mischievous clown character from the stylized Italian theater movement, Commedia dell'Arte. Their costumes dating back to the 16th century were sewn together from fabric scraps. Over time, the diamond pattern became associated with Harlequins. Each diamond-shaped piece of fabric of this costume was cut out separately and meticulously stitched together to create the fabric of this bodice. Look carefully at the peplum, and you will notice that the diamonds are in graduated sizes from small to large. Sign me up for this carnival. Portuguese woman of war, based on Captain Ferreria, the Portuguese woman of war, commander of the airship La Medusa. She is the scourge of sky pirates through the Portuguese empire. Her uniform is a mashup of traditional Portuguese military uniforms of the 1800s and the leather A2 jackets worn by US flyboys during World War II. The closures on the jacket convert from tight to formal dress. The shoulder patch includes the coat of arms of the Portuguese Navy as well as the heraldic motto, the talent of doing well. The uniform is completed with doe skin breeches and back four and a half by corn. Cheers. Introducing our fabulous fashion guest of honor, Kid Greenwood. She is sailing in wearing her latest costume figurehead of the Parachip Palace Athenee. The inspiration for this creation came from a visit to the New Bedford Whaling Museum. She was fascinated with a display of whaling ship figureheads. This obsession turned into an engineering challenge to create a maneuverable figurehead as possible. Perhaps a whole fleet of them will be in our future. Her first figurehead was inspired by the warrior woman half figure of the British warship Boar as well as my favorite Greek goddess, Athena. Did you know, Kitch has been surrounded by costumes her whole life, and along with her family was active in local community theater. During her career, she worked with Tony, Emmy, and Oscar-nominated winning designers, who were influential to developing her costume skills, pattern, 
including pattern inflatable advertising mascots for companies such as Disney, Sony, Michelin, Nickelodeon, Jim Davis of Garfield fame, and others. She has been an active participant and an award-winning costumer to many of the local costume and historical groups. Steampunk is Kidge's favorite costume genre, as it allows her to take the historical silhouettes and details that she loves and transform them through a new lens. As you have witnessed today, Kidge loves discovering new materials and techniques to make her designs come alive and never knows when the next inspirational bolt of lightning will strike. Kidge advises you to step out of your comfort zone. But let's invite a couple of friends up to the stage so we can get to know Kidge a little better. used to participate in an annual uh, variety show for their church. And my mother would spend all year researching, um, you know, something about, uh, there'll be a theme about Hollywood movies, or there was a country western, and she'd make these elaborate costumes. Uh, there would be something like, uh, she made a mule costume, and my father was dressed as a mule, and my brother was uh, Yosemite Sam. Um, giant ostriches, so so basically the room where I grew up in was also a costume museum. And um, so of course I naturally got roped into it as well, and you know, so really it was in my in my heritage, I guess one would say. So, and, and um, I was able to actually do it, something I could do professionally. My mom could only do it, but she was only an amateur, but she had uh, an attention to detail that you know I really sort of embraced. But odd choices of fabrics, but she could, she knew how to do research, so it was really fun. So amazing way to grow up, what a great childhood. Tell us what your best and worst costume moments have been. Well, you know sometimes. It could be on the same costume. I usually there's a sort of an arc of when you you're first get inspired by a costume and you start working on it and you're full on into it and, um, and you're just in the zone. And, it, and it, you look at the sketch and the costume looks exactly like the sketch. So it's very rewarding. The worst part is when it's over. I mean, I can honestly tell you that after working on this thing for months at a time, I'm going to have a costume hangover after this. You know, that will be a big void in my life. And, that, and it, you know, until, you know, something else. You know, I have a couple of projects on the back burner already. But, but it is, you know, it is kind of like a depressing thing to sort of, you know, that's the end of that, you know. Or is it? That or is it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, these costumes are like your children. They are. They are. So, are you self-taught, or did you study fashion design? Um, I did. I did attend um, the school of fashion design. That was the actual name of the school in in um, Boston. And um, I wanted to do. At that point, I was still doing some kind of um, doing cosplay costumes, and I wanted to take it. I wanted to become a professional costumer. So I took pattern drafting um, and construction, and um, I was able to, to get a couple of costume internships at um, some some stock theaters. And from there, I mean, once you get to know a designer, you know, by word of mouth, you can get a job. So from one summer stock job, I could get a, another job. And um, I worked at the Boston Ballet and the Opera Company in Boston. And then from there, I moved to Houston, where I worked at the Houston Grand Opera and um, Alley Theater, which is the equity theater. So it's kind of like you piggyback, you know, you get to learn people and work gets out, you know, you recommend it. But, and also I've been blessed to work with some really talented designers and the most talented ones are the ones who are very giving of, of, of skills and information. So you really learn a lot that way. But, you know, you have to have the kind of basics to get those jobs and to get where to go. Hello, Kish. 
Thank you so much for being on our show. Oh, so, how has your work evolved since you began? Well, what's fun, um, when I used to do it professionally get paid, you were basically just making the deadline and meeting the vision of whatever costume designer. Now that it's my designs, I can take as long as I want to make a costume, which sometimes it is a long time. I don't mind doing things that are um, time consuming. It's kind of very rewarding, rewarding to me. But what's, more, what's fun now is I find that when I do a design, I really try to develop a real backstory to the character. And I think that's really important, especially with the steampunk things. It's not just, I'm not just creating a dress, I'm creating a story behind that. And I think it really makes the designs much richer. So that's kind of, that's, so that's a, a nice uh, sort of evolution of my, my design aesthetic. Well, that's really great. Okay, so given that you've just laid out a lot of, of little bits, is which one did you think as your favorite part of the design process? Um, I would say I love the research. I love just getting immersed in whatever. Um, on this one, it was you know researching figureheads, um, furlies. You know, I mean, it's really kind of fun, just sort of falling down the rabbit hole of. of and I just I like to accumulate all this research and then filter it to make my design. And that's such a fun, fun thing to do because you get you might find yourself going in a different direction. Um, but it really sort of informs your design. It's not, there's obviously creative leeway, but you never know what's really going to inspire you and have that spark that's really going to create a fantastic costume. So if you start with the research, can you tell us a little bit more about the rest of your design process? How do you get from the concept to the actual construction part? Uh, sure, and if anyone's coming, I have a panel tomorrow at noon that talks about how I developed this character which was a really fun um, engineering part. Um, so yes, I do get the sketch down. Um, I'll do the patterning. I don't use commercial patterns. I have my own kind of um, library of patterns that I can adapt. Um, you know, do a mock-up. Um, if there is kind of some kind of weird engineering thing, um, try to work that problem out um, in advance. Um, you know, it's. And, and then I have to have my husband try to fit me in the garment. That's always kind of fun. Right? Um, and, uh, and then just do it, 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 it. And the fun thing about working with him, too, is sometimes I'm in the middle of a project, and you know you get really excited, and you can, you're at the finish, you can see, you can envision what it's going to look like. And I'll show it to Greg, and then he'll sort of look, notice like some of the most ridiculous little detail. And it's like, oh, is the piping going to be just hanging down? Is, is that going to be pinned on? And I was like, oh. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, you know, if you can't, some, some pieces are more organic than others. This was kind of a more organic one. Other ones are uh, like the Wonder Woman. That's exactly how I envisioned it. I sketched it. It came out perfectly. So, so it's just kind of fun. So then, what kind of skills, according to you, are necessary for an accessible costume? Well, um, I do think, you know, sketching isn't as important as long as you can convey what your idea is. Because I know some designers who will just use templates and trace over, and that's fine. I do think you should have a basic knowledge of patterning, just so you know what you're going to, you know how to make the thing that you want to make, because just because you sketch it, um, you don't have a magic wand that's going to make it just appear. Um, and it also just depends in sewing skills, um, just the basics. You really do have to know the basics. Even if, unless you're going to do a sketch and just bring it to somebody else to make, but if you do that, you should really know how it goes together, so you have control over the design. So that's really important. Thank you very much. I think we have another guest who's going to be asking some more questions. Hi. So what have been your weirdest and wildest sources of inspiration for your brand and for your design directions? Well, well I, this is a kind of a funny one, is the, the Wonder Woman one, and how that started out, I was watching a Fred Astaire movie. And uh, Fred Astaire, he, and he's wearing those really, really tailored little jacket, and I thought, you know, that would be really, he would make a really cool Riddler. And I thought, then I thought, 
you know, maybe 1930s, you know, villains and superheroes, and that's when I immediately thought, it was like a, it was like a lightning bolt, Wonder Woman, Aviator. 1938. It's perfect. Perfect. But it is for like, you know, Fred Astaire to that. What? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so, you just never know. Um, and then the, the Royal Air Dispatch. That one really was all from that little patch that she has on. It's a little, it looks like a, at the, uh, it looks like a cat with wings. And that's really what inspired it. So, yes. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> So, as a costume designer, is it actually possible to create anything that you can imagine? Mm, um, you know, there might be some special effects that would, would stretch the abilities. You know, I, there are some things I can't really do, things that are like a mechanical pair of wings. I know it can happen, but I know that's not for me. You know, I, I feel comfortable sewing something, soldering something. Not so much, you know. I, um, but I think, you, you know, why not? I mean, but you might have to um, change the design to get the full effect. You know, there might be compromises have to be made. But why not try for it? You know, push, push it. What would you say is the best lesson that you've learned along the way? Um, never give up. Never surrender. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's just like, you know, some things aren't going to work out. Don't get discouraged, you know, put it aside, go back to it, or, you know, or just try a different way. It's because there are no real mistakes in making this. And sometimes something with a mistake might turn into something great as well. So just can't, you know, that's about it, I think. One more friend coming to ask you more questions. Okay. What we've all been wanting to know is why steampunk? Well, I love it. It gives me, an, you know, I could do historical costuming. I do, I have done it, I do it. But to me, it gets kind of boring, it's kind of boring. Um, I like the fact that you could take, you know, steampunk, come up with a story and you can just make a, you can go in your, off in your own direction and you can make it as historical as you want it to be. It can be anything you want. It's very, it's very freeing, I think, as a, a for a costume design genre. So, and you get to do gadgets. <laughs> gadgets, always. Um, and how was costume designing for you during the pandemic? Well, that was a ch that wasn't really a challenge. Um, buying fabric was really difficult. You would get um, not being able to go to fabric stores or that would have quality silks. So I'd get swatches sent, they would come, they wouldn't work. I'd order materials from India that would show up in two months. Gorgeous, but two months later. Um, and also just things like there was definitely supply uh, chain issues with the EVA foam. Um, in particular, they had this half inch doweling, which I used a lot of. And I bought a bunch. I thought I bought enough, which of course was not true and then go back to the same vendor and they're out of it. And then uh, go to another vendor, buy everything they have, still not enough, go back, they're out of it. And so it was really kind of interesting. It was really a challenge and really, you know, I try to you know, support local businesses. Thank goodness for Douglas and Sturgis because they um, saved a lot of shipping costs. But um, it was really a challenge for some of the products. But Was this created during the Yes, this was my pandemic, one of my pandemic projects, so, so it was fun, it was fun, yeah. right. Again, kids, thank you so much for doing our show. This, this time this has just been so much, so much fun to see all the wonderful items that you do and put out here. Thank you, thank you for getting all the models to do this. I thought it was probably the hardest part, getting everyone together and putting them in their office today. It's just, it was really great to get this done today. Thank you so much. One of the, um, when I was reading through all the things that you sent me, one of my favorite uh, things that you said is, it, did it always work as expected? And you said no, but it was a fun learning experience. So step out of your comfort zone. And I just want to mention that same thing to all of you. Step out of your comfort zone um, and have fun. But is there any other advice that you would give? 
um, don't get married. To, I don't have a microphone. Don't be married to anything because you might you might work on something and sometimes it just doesn't work. You have to just put it aside and move on. I mean, sometimes things don't work. Don't be married. Thank you. Massive round of applause for our guest designer, Kit. And for all the and games and models as well. Let's welcome back our clockwork alchemy tracks and this guys. Because of all the looks on display today are before your eyes, the visual seats one last time. Thank you all so much for coming to our fashion show. Enjoy the rest of the show. Life's an old man's sleep. Thanks, Paul.